I'm here with Shane Keegan ahead of the game uh, with Shamrock Rovers at the Tala Stadium on Friday. Shane, you described the result against Finn Harps as unacceptable after the game here the other night. What's the mood like been in the camp since then? Um, I think very much a case of everybody chomping at the bait and wanting to get out there and redeem, redeem themselves as quickly as possible. Um, I don't think anybody, I don't see how anybody involved with the club management or players could be happy with our performance level and, and obviously the result on uh, last weekend so it's, it looks just a case of getting onto the training ground and trying to work on things as, as much as we possibly can to make sure that we do ourselves more justice this weekend mm, look he admitted yourself after the game you underperformed uh, on friday the first goal didn't help things and i know you've you've come out after the game and you've defended your goalkeeper bb his performance in the president's cup he made some important saves in sligo but how has his morale been this week after that mistake good he's he's an interesting character um <laughs> ali so he is he's a very interesting character he's 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 a larger than life sort of a fella um, and look, I think by and large keepers probably are that sort of personality, but it certainly works in his favour. Um, he's not a fellow who's going to go into his shell just on, on the back of something like that happening. He's been as 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 boisterous and as as, um, as 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 important around the place as he always is. And not looking to be water off a duck's back to him, and he'll he'll be get, looking to get back to the to the previous standard of performance that he showed in the other two as quickly as possible. Mm. Look, obviously you've taken kind of progressive steps here at the club over the last while. You came in for us as an analysis coach, and then last season you were involved in the coaching side of things, and now you're you're the team manager. And I know there's a lot of noise about that at the minute. I'm not going to put you in that position <laughs> and ask you about that. But um, I suppose with each progressive step you've taken, the pressure grows further and further because you have a more um, primary role within the team how do you feel the group overall are dealing with that there's obviously lads there like Pat Hobe and Chris Shields they've all been through this they've, they've got titles falling out their back pocket they know what it's about but for the newer lads coming into this environment I know the fans aren't here so that takes away a little bit of the pressure but there's a lot of noise around this Dundalk team at the moment and you're going up to face the champions now it's it's probably the biggest pressurised cooker situation you could, you could face yeah. at the moment so how do you feel everyone uh, yourself and the players are dealing with that pressure yeah good look I, I think players I think people often read too much into um, players opinions on, on kind of what's going on off the field at a club players only ever want to get on the pitch and perform they only want to get on the pitch and train and, on, and get on the pitch on match night and, and perform um, I think everybody media and and everybody kind of reads a hell of a lot more and puts a lot more importance on all the other stuff than, than the players ever ever do um, so yeah look what's the easiest way to deal with any noise that's around the place the easiest way to deal with noise is to perform and, and to get results mm. um, and get things moving back in the right direction as quickly as possible and that's that's the players sole focus in fairness to them that's that's what they've they've arrived in Monday morning ready to do again I want to move on from the kind of management stuff because I don't think personally that that's fair to put you in that situation but you have just said there that there's no excuse for the players you feel there's no confusion at all within within the dressing room at the moment they, they know exactly what the system is yeah no i think so i think so to be fair to them and i don't think any of them have ever tried to make a, any excuse of, of of the setup off the field um not look i i think in terms of the performance on on friday night am i saying that it's all on the players of course i'm not because you know Made, you know, did the system require tweaking? Did we make the right selection to start with? Did we make the right changes? There's a hell of a lot that that's back on us. But in terms of the players' performance on the pitch, they'll be disappointed with themselves as individuals. I don't think any of them would say that the reason I didn't play well is because I didn't know who I was taking my instructions <laughs> off of. Their uh, their brilliant fellas, their 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 attitude and their their character wouldn't allow them to 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 do that. Um, but again, collectively, we you know we we have very little room for manoeuvre now. We need to, to get it right ASAP on Friday night. And in terms of the players you can choose from Friday, how uh, what's the what's the team news at the moment? Yeah, we're still without Sean Murray and Dan Kelly, um, who are still working their way back from injury. Obviously, then we have to have had the situation with with, with Sonny, so Sonny it won't be available to us either. Rivas has had a busy week of international duty, that's for sure. But he is a machine, um, and I think that will give him every chance of, of potentially still being available for it um, Patrick obviously missed last weekend but has been involved in bits and pieces of training and we'll have a look tomorrow morning and see how much involvement he can have and whether he's an option for, for Friday night so we're, we're, we're getting there we're very very nearly there as I say Sonny back from, from, from his suspension really we're just looking at Sean Murray and Dan Kelly who uh neither of them are a million miles away mm, and uh, you mentioned the busy week your Kofskis has had and, and Sonny scored as well for, for his national team and I was just saying to Greg earlier um, it's great PR not only for the club but for the league as well to have these international players that are performing at such a high level it is it is um, I mean Rivas' assist last night was absolutely outstanding and the result was outstanding for them as well to, to, to pull it back from 3-1 down to, to get that draw um, and it's great even in you know you've got your WhatsApp groups and it's mm. it, it's fantastic to see all of the players you know normally 
international breaks you know they, they wouldn't be paying a whole lot of attention to what's going on outside of, of, of their own country but you know within within moments of, of Sonny getting his goal or within moments of, of, of Rivas putting in the, the, the brilliant cross for the goal the, the, the WhatsApp group is exploding with every with all the players congratulating them and saying what a goal and what a cross and all of that kind of stuff so it creates an extra buzz around the place that uh, can only be a positive thing uh, Obviously you mentioned Sonny is suspended uh, and you mentioned Jokowska's had a very very busy week but just in terms of uh, the regulations and the rules about players that have been away on uh, international duty how does that work exactly? Yeah look we've had to get a huge amount of clarity of that during the week I suppose it was less important with Sonny with because of the suspension so it was easy enough on on that side of things um and thankfully Rivas there's he he falls into that elite bubble crack okay. that we're able to bring him straight back in so we are um look the fact that the list I suppose changes quite regularly as to what countries are red zone mm. and what aren't red zone you have to be so have your eye on this all the time I suppose we're very very lucky in that Danny Miller who is who's our physio is obviously the physio with the Irish international team as well so he's got a lot of experience in terms of all that to coming and going um, so he's able to keep us very very well informed there as well but it is a bit of a minefield mm. and just going back to what we talked about last week with Sonny and uh, the whole thing with international call-ups and it has to be Irish players if games are going to be postponed when did you first become aware of that rule um, yeah, I think it was, I'm trying to think, I suppose it was at the beginning of the week leading into that game. Um, and look again, you know, I've no problem saying from our from our own side, it's it's going to be a case of once bitten, twice shy. We, we need mm. to be on top of these things a little bit better ourselves, so we do. But it just seemed such a straightforward case that we probably hadn't done enough due diligence on it because yeah. to me two international call-ups is two international call-ups I would never have thought it, it, it mattered which countries those call-ups were from um, so yeah look it wasn't ideal yeah d- definitely I'm in the same boat I had no idea of that rule and I'm following this league a long time but again you've said it there maybe do you feel on the admin side of things the club just need to be a little bit sharper on, on things like that as well yeah well look I suppose the combination of, of everything that's going on with Covid allied to it, it being the first time that us or any club in the League of Ireland has had so many fo- foreign players yeah. I suppose or, or international players um, it is a bit of a, a learning curve and everybody is having to get up to speed on, on areas that, that maybe weren't ever seen as a priority before so uh, yeah look we, we, we just need to manage the whole situation a little bit better yeah and look finally this game against Shamrock Rovers uh, you said the media love I suppose they love games like this because we can have a lot of talk about it and, and rev it up to the last but does it already fall into the cannot lose category for Dundalk given your slow start to the season look I think the fact that it's it's um, the fact that it's away from home you know you're, you are second favourites technically you are second favourites going into a, a, a game against Rovers on, on home soil in the way that they would probably be second favourites coming into a game against us on, on home soil so it, it is a huge game I, I wouldn't go as far as to say that it's, it's a no-lose situation but look what we can't allow to happen is, is that gap that's opened up in, in each of the last two seasons I know it would, the, the club managed to turn it around in 2019 but you don't want to be allowing that kind of gap to open for, for a third season in a row it's, it's, you, you really really don't so from that side of things you know half a dozen games gone there needs to be very, very few points between us, Rovers, or anybody else mm-hmm. that's up around the top. Um, and a, a good result on Friday night would kind of help making sure that that's because the case. you've got some very tough fixtures coming after this as well. The other two Dublin clubs, Bows and Pats. So yeah, as you said, I you can't afford to lose ground. I think in the opening five games, we've got the other four teams who finished in the top five um, along with us last season. I'm pretty sure. Obviously, the one game that that they didn't apply to is the one that we managed to go to, to go and lose last. Uh, last Friday so that's put an extra bit of pressure on us but no it's an extremely extremely tough start that's for sure um, and we just need to navigate our way through it with a decent points tally and, and, and then try and, and capitalise when it levels out a bit more Shane best of luck the weekend cheers